Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, happy to be here. And also, thank you so much for everyone who have joined here and have believed in this platform that Girl Geek community have brought in. I'm a huge fan of Girl Geek community. I have been part of that uh, since 2015. And this session is more for you. And I would love to know from you and your journey about why are you here? Uh, because I wanted to ask you guys about your journey and why is this session, which is to carve your elevator pitch, why is it important for you? And I would love to see a lot uh, of your responses in the chat. And I would love to share my journey, just like Amanda shared about my experience. I would like to add why am I passionate and why am I here? Because I myself have been an introvert early in my career and been in 15 years of experience and i would say it's only in last five years that i have found my voice thanks to the community i have been uh, i have lived in san francisco recently transplanted in texas and in my career i have been in massachusetts for five years in san francisco bay area for eight years one year in new york and what i learned from all this transition and, and travel was a there are career transition. B, there can be a roller coaster ride in your journey. And C, how would you communicate your journey to other people and make it more impactful? So you make a mark on a people's mind that, hey, I met this person at this place. This is a great takeaway of finding your voice. And my journey, I would like to share, but please use the chat. Why is it important for you to have an impactful elevator pitch and why I do here. So my journey started, I graduated from graduate school, background in electrical engineering and computer engineering, network management. I had a job while I was graduating, but since I am a, an international student, my paperwork was not available. They did not come on time and my offer was rescinded. In 15 years, I have come into a plan of uh, having a better immigration strategy and now I have a green card. However, I have been through a stage of being an immigrant, being on student visa, being on work visa, being on dependent visa, getting laid off. I had a roller coaster ride with multiple reasons and multiple breakthroughs within the country. And when I graduated, I was looking for a job and when I found my career path, it happened to be based on my networking skills. I landed a technical marketing engineer role at NetApp, a network appliance company, which was uh, back in the day a competitor for EMC and now a competitor for Dell. And this is the place where I got the opportunity to travel across the world, present in front of 200 people. I was part of product management, but still an engineer, which I started my career in. But also I learned from my reporting director, uh, my manager, who at that time was director of product management, and I learned by connecting with them that, hey, I would like to shadow, I would like to learn, I would like to explore. Because being an engineer, just sitting on the desk was not something I would want to do. I was in lab, working with all the cables. I was in front of customers and just sales, training them on technical pieces. I was working with marketing. I was working with engineers. It was a very cross-functional role. And this gave me an opportunity to dive into different areas. But what I went through was a roller coaster ride where I got laid off, immigration things changed, and I got opportunity to connect with a lot of professionals in my industry. And guess what? Somebody from my friends hired me because I went on few trips or a reunion trips, you can say, and they saw me how I'm managing the skills of having a whole group together and making a plan to go somewhere, do the activities. And I got the role in a utility company in New York. What did that help me with? It helped me in transitioning from an engineer role to like in analytics and going towards project and now program manager role. It was not an easy ride. And as I say, why this workshop? Because I had been through multiple layoffs. I had been through multiple rounds of interviews and still have gotten rejected. 
I've been in video interviews even before pandemic started. I've been in the shoes of people who are struggling now or have had never had a chance to go to the networking event and find their voice of like how can they articulate their journey based on the audience and I am now in Texas living in a house having a great husband in my life why would I need to do that because I know I want to give back to people in the community who look like me that I did not have in my time so that's why like since 2018 I started helping people out on LinkedIn by making their LinkedIn profile optimization helping people with salary negotiation I started a podcast higher talk I started a community when I moved to uh, Dallas Fort Worth area because I did not have friends but I did want to give back and contribute to the community because I felt the same thing being the only woman in the room being the only woman in, in leadership being the only women in the, in the lab or in the workshops that you are conducting and going to the conferences, there were hardly 10 women among 100 men. So here is the agenda. Please share your why because that's where I would love to help out, make it more interactive and let's start to help each other out. Now, one more thing I would like to say, if you are sharing your why, I would like to read it in, your, uh, in the chat as well, but also, this is your chance to connect with everyone in the chat too. Drop in your LinkedIn profile, connect with each other, send a personalized invite saying that, hey, I was in the same session as you in on uh, Elevate Career Conference and we attended the, uh, the session of elevator pitch articulation and would love to connect. This is how you will grow the network and this is how I used to do. If I could not connect with the panelists, I would also connect with the people who are attending because guess what? They are in the same boat as I am, you know, and you can find my LinkedIn profile in, in my uh, session. It's also on my page. Hana Rashid is my name on LinkedIn as well. Now your why. I, I quickly go through some of the why's. It is so important to practice an elevator, which it feels so much more organizing otherwise. Sometimes things you say to someone else needs to hear and never hide the voice. I love that. Um, I just bought a house so i'm terrified of even the idea of layoff absolutely i love to support a piece of community that just need little help so far in my career i have been software developer for only non-profit i'm here on this session to learn about expressing thoughts on more effectively with my colleagues i'm here to <clears throat> i'm here to learn from each other and help each other out community is incredibly important we love to refresh and refocus on absolutely we all need to learn even vera who's the senior product manager highly experienced person but every stage of life if we need to learn because we are what millennials or maybe not and there is gen z who's coming in so we have to just keep up with the new generation as well um i mean do not give enough in myself to make a pitch absolutely there are people who have told me like why don't go open a business and i was like Hmm, I have never thought about it. And this is happening since the last 10 years. And pandemic happened. I started exploring and things started exploding as well. Um, now, let's go quickly on our session. And I would click on this. Now, this is why I said community support is important. Just spam the chat with your LinkedIn profile. Click on all the tabs. You can send the connect invite afterwards. But spam. Spam, 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 because chat is what you would need. I'm sorry if it's going on YouTube, but still, um, you have to learn to pay it forward. If you are going forward in your leadership role, put back the ladder and bring those other people up because we need more women in leadership role to build up more and more women network. It's amazing to see a room full of women leaders that you can connect with and you will also do a, and one thing I want to share, if you want to, this is something some a lot of people have said, if you want to get things done, hire a woman. If you want to get everything done, hire a mom. I'm not a mom yet, but I still vouch for mom. So whoever is in the mom, uh, whoever is mom in this group, kudos to you of working in so many roles in your life as well as in your career. Here are a few tips. And I would say there could be even more that you, that come up you know 
So what is elevator pitch? Can you guys share in the chat, please? Um, elevator pitch is basically your introduction. It can change based on the audience, based on the place you are in. And introduction, we are in an era of Instagram threads, Twitter, where everything is changing every day. Attention span is not more than 30 to 60 seconds. And that is why the elevator pitch has to be less than a minute. In an interview, it can be two minutes when you have an interview or job interview, but otherwise keep it brief, keep it simple. Know your audience. If you are in a networking event or in a baby shower or in a housewarming party or in a kid's play area, your, your elevator pitch would be different compared to if you are uh, meeting somebody at a conference, if you are meeting somebody in a meeting or a customer meeting or in your work trip, your elevator pitch will change. And I used to be amazed by guys. You know, we have to learn a lot of things from men because there goes the confidence. I met a guy in one of the ice cream social and he was talking to me, everything technical. And I heard him same thing talking to someone else, but marketing focus. I was like, hmm, what is this guy doing? But that depends on your audience. Your audience is important. If you are in a job interview, you look for a job, and I'll talk about that example later in the slide too. Uh, you talk about a job, you talk about the job description, you do the research on the company. However, in the social environment, if you are in a happy hour, if you are in a conference, or just in a networking event, your elevator pitch would be different. But how can you make it impactful? And I would like to ask you guys in the chat, how would you make it impactful? Because it does not matter if you are in a leadership role or if you deal with finances or not. But the number gives you the data. And the data shows the impact of your work. And there are some examples I can give you, which is even before I started handling finances and stuff, is number of projects I worked in. And start with number of years I have worked in. It does not matter which role you are in. But it does matter how many years of corporate experience do you have. And even if you have started working from the age 16, that's something you can share in your personal life story too. But when you start about your professional experience, number of years you work with, number of projects you worked with, if you have worked with different number of stakeholders, for example, I have worked with 25 stakeholders in 11 projects, and the dollar amount of that project is $500 million. Even if it's not $500 million, even if I'm working on a 100K project, but that is a dependent project for a $500 million project, that is impactful project for you. And that's something you must say because it can become a risk for a bigger brand, bigger uh, uh, company vision. So that is why numbers are important. Now, if you have worked with different geographic location people, that's a number. If you have traveled to number of places, if you have worked with X number of customers, that is a number you can talk about. If you have bring in savings of X dollars amount, that's a number you can talk about. If you have improved number of cycles or efficiencies or performance of any, any kind of software tool, that is a number you could talk about. But keep it simple. Something that you must learn and explain. What you do, what are your skills? If you are transitioning from a certain role, suppose journalism to QA or um, journalism to any other role or from UX design to a product manager, role, talk about your transitional skills. For example, in my case, I'm an engineer with a, a number of, number of uh, skills that I can translate to for project manager. I'm a more of a people person. I like working with one-on-one. -on -one. That's your USP. Make um, uh, amends about how you are different from others. Mention your goals specifically and, and, and bring in a specific in, like interesting hook, which is, oh, by the way, I love photography. Oh, I'm into podcasting. I love to share these things with other people and love to help and give back to community. I love to do volunteer work. Those are the things that you can be very specific and you can stand out. And what you do, you quickly go over. On the confidence side, be more persuasive, be more, uh, uh, make more eye contact and practice. Every time end your conversation with your LinkedIn profile QR code, 
that's how the hook of you know, one round circle of connecting with people and it's okay if you have not talked to anyone and gone to a conference or or in a networking session happened to me five times or more and i made a goal of next time i go i talk to one person and come back that's a goal i would have and then i increase one by one and that's how i practice my elevator pitch now what not to do when i'm nervous i ask or i ask or, or talk too fast and a lot of time is taken as oh she's immigrant and she talks too fast i don't know her lingo but that's not the case it happens to everybody so what i would say practice practice with pause because whenever we are nervous we are verbose and we talk too fast and you have to emphasize on the work that you want to emphasize in like for example i have 15 years of experience working in five different companies in the cloud environment so you know you have a pitch voice going up and down that's what you have to elevate and and not restrict yourself in one pitch i'm so I sorry we're out of time and there's so much yeah. interest in this topic um thanks everybody for joining us thank you so much hana for your time and for putting this together for us and we will see everybody in the next session